Okay, so today we are going to do topic 1.4, that is the resource allocation in different economic systems. Yes. So the first thing, um, we started off with the economic system in which we discussed the market economy that um, the ownership is basically with the private individuals, they are controlling the resource allocation and government role is very minimized right yes. and uh, we talked about some of its features and advantages and disadvantages one of the major disadvantages that we studied was the market failure on which there will be a huge topic coming up in the coming classes as well yes. so now we are going to today move on to the next one and that is the planned economy Yes, sir. So, what is planned economy, by the way? Um, sir, planned economy is one which is controlled completely by the centralized government, and um, there is no basically like how in market economy ownership mm -hmm. is in the hands of private individuals. In planned, the ownership is in the hands of um, the public sector. In the Very good. Public mm -hmm. Good. So, all resources. are allocated by government. So there is this is known as the central planning. Yes, sir. So now we'll talk about the features. So features of planned economy are that government controls the system. Yes, sir. So they are providing public goods and merit goods at lower prices specifically the merit goods so public goods are not everybody is paying for it okay fine so first thing uh if i ask you the difference between a public good and a merit good okay um so a public good is one provided by the public sector and it is both excludable sorry it's non-excludable and non noble um but a merit good a merit good is like, for example, a healthcare, education. This is also provided by the government. It can also be provided by the um, market economy, right? Like by the private sector. But mm -hmm. the planned economy, they um, provide these merit goods at a lower price. But these merit goods can be both um, excludable and rival. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, there are a few things that you have talked about here. One thing is that the merit goods are also provided by the private sector. But the, what's the difference if the merit goods are also provided by the private sector? So why there is a need for the government to provide? Because I think, sir, in the market economy, it's um, under provided because there's a lack of information. Um, so the people in the economy don't really know that merit mm -hmm. goods are like good for them and so because of that causing market failure the government also has to provide these merit goods at even lower prices so that people can afford it so what about the public goods are they not provided by the private sector public goods um Public goods, I think they can't be provided by the public sector, uh, private sector, but they are. Arwa, why would the private sector provide the public goods? Their purpose is profit maximization or profit generation. So public goods are not those, those sort of goods for which they can earn the profit. Because, oh, you know, public uh, goods, not you cannot stop anybody from using it, even though they have not paid for it. So the private sector is not going to offer something for free. Oh, yes, sir. 
right yes sir so that is you know is very important to understand here is that public good that the government is providing is it's not like the government is using their own money so obviously it's a tax money so that is the people's money that they are utilizing to provide the services or the goods to the public like the yes, public sir. parks right they can be a park that a private sector can also provide but that park will be like the amusement parks for which there is a mm, there is a ticket although there is a ticket sometimes for the public parks as well but there will be a huge difference it will be very minimal in the public good um, or the power of or of the public park but uh, when we consider the uh, amusement park so the yes. ticket is very high so they are charging for their services and because they want to gain the profit so that's why it is not feasible for the private sector to provide the public good to so many people and then there is a free rider problem which will also occur so they cannot afford that yes, that's sir. why the public goods are only provided by the government now if i ask you one more thing when i ask you to um, tell me the difference between the public good and merit good so you started off the merit good by giving the example yes sir if you have to define merit good how would you define it uh, merit good are they are goods which have they're under provided and under produced in um, the economy but they will improve the lifestyle and the living standards of um, people in the economy deepo when you say that they are under provided and under produced yes sir by the way it's um, almost the same thing yes, but sir. why they are under provided or under produced i'm um, sure because in the people who have to like for example if the plant economy is providing healthcare um the thing is um some people might not really know other healthcare is good for them that they need it for better health this basically mm -hmm. this like information failure because of which they don't really know that they need that health care so they won't uh, use the hospitals they won't go for health care because it can be expensive if it's from the market economy which is why the planned economy provides these merit goods um, at lower prices so people can afford them and they can understand that it's something that they need in life like it's something that's important for their health or for their um basically to live so it means that they are undervalued yes sir and under consumed yes sir by consumers hence under produced by producers so that is the reason why they are under providing it because they are undervalued so information failure very rightly you said and second thing is that they are under consumed by the consumers which yes. is why the producers are under producing it so only providing to those who can afford to buy the merit goods right yes. great now the next point lack of international trade why in planned economy there might be a situation that there is lack of international trade um maybe if the either i have two things in my head the first one is that maybe because the planned economy is taking control of all of the resources maybe they don't have to really um import extra resources from other countries because they'll allocate them in a way that um all of the needs are being fulfilled mm -hmm. or second thing that can happen is maybe you think that international trade can um reduce how much a like the local or the domestic firms can sell so they don't they want more domestic sales so maybe they don't um, 
want international trade like mm-hmm. extra other competitors products from other countries coming into this country you know why, uh, why the private sector is more interested in the international trade is because they want expansion of their businesses they want more money they want the growth all those things it's not like uh, the uh, the government undervalue the international trade because that is going to obviously make your country more specialized in certain products and then you do not have to produce every product and you can also import from other countries as well but this is you know is not that easy for uh, um the government to do it on their own because their main purpose is first to satisfy the needs and wants of the local people so they are not in that uh, business of making profit so that is one of the reasons then basic necessities are provided and this is the priority yes sir of the government now if we talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of the system so what advantages comes to your mind um so i think maybe because it's not in the hands of um, private individuals the planned economy will be able to provide those merit goods which the market economy might not have been able to fully provide as it was under consumed because of the prices so the planned economy can fix that problem by providing merit goods at a lower price which can um basically solve the problem of um under consumption and under um under produce under production of by producers okay um this is fine then goods are for everyone so they are not producing the goods only to those who can afford they are basically producing the goods for those who cannot afford yes sir a higher price so this is another thing public goods are also provided which the private sector does not provide inequality is also reduced because they would aim to provide uh, employment if we consider yes, from the point of view of the employment so when they will be producing the goods so they will rather than using the capital intensive technique they will be uh, more inclined towards using the labor intensive technique so that more of the labor can be employed and overall employment level in the country will increase which will result in more income for the poor people so that the gap between the rich and poor can also be reduced yes sir and so that the people can also uh you know buy the basic necessities yeah. and they also do one more thing that is ban on demerit goods so what are demerit goods so demerit goods are ones which are by the market economy are um overvalued so that they're over consumed so they're overproduced but there's something mm-hmm. that's not good for the consumer like for example cigarettes yes these are the goods which are overvalued because again the information failure yes sir and uh, are over consumed by the consumers which is why the producers are over producing them the, yes, and uh, so that's why the go- the government does not want the society utilizing goods which can affect their health or which can deteriorate their, their living standards so that's why they sometimes put a ban on demerit goods now you gave an example for cigarette Yes, sir. Are they banned? Cigarettes are not banned, sir. But in some, in many countries, actually, they have set like um, minimum prices for them, and there's tax on um, cigarettes. So it might not like be banned, but it can make it really expensive. So people like might not be able to afford. They might try to go towards the necessities which are more uh, cheaper at lower prices. So if the product if you know if the product cutting you short here 
just yes. because that I want to put one more point here so that you can explain that as well. That if a product which is deteriorating the health of the people, which is not good at all, it is damaging yes, um, the health. Why the government only putting more taxes on it so that they become expensive or um, sometimes, you know, putting the labels on the packs as well that say yes, smoking is injurious to health. Why aren't they banning it? Um, maybe because they know that the consumers would still like need yes. that, want that thing, even though they know it's bad. You're right. Them. You're right. Spot on. Yes, sir. Because exactly. they have information. There. They don't know it's bad for them. So they will just rebel that, oh my God, no. Why would you ban this and stuff? So it will just create problems for the uh, government in turn. And you know, it's not only that that they will be um, crying for it. Yes, sir. Like, okay, fine, that this is the um, uh, cry is that uh, you have banned the product, which was, um, you know, we are addicted to a product and you have banned it. So what will happen? No, that's not the case. The case is that it will still be consumed. Yes, sir. It will still be smuggled. It will still be consumed. So yes. once a product which is an addictive product and the government understands that people are not going to stop buying it and still going to utilize. Uh, so uh, that way, in that way, if we consider this, then the government feels like that, OK, fine, the people are still using it and we are getting nothing out of it. So how about yes. we put a lot of taxes? on it so that we generate the revenue and the other policies that we can apply is that um, under 18 cannot buy go and buy the mm, cigarettes or any yes, you sir. know um, uh, any type of drug that is you know addictive and uh, then banning it in the public places at least so that people are not uh, damaging the health of the others as well but 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 there is a question sometimes people ask that, OK, fine. So if it is, you know, uh, when you know that they are going to use it and you're not banning it. So how about the alcohol that is also going to be used and the people, but the government has banned. Why? The reason is that that is, you know, is more of a religious discussion. Yes, sir. In the religious countries, you will see that it is banned, even though people might be having it from somewhere and still using it. But it doesn't change the fact that it is banned only because because, you know, it's the religious aspect which is which is resulting in this ban, which might not be too strictly applied to cigarettes, probably. Yes. Sir. Right. So that is, you know, is uh, another reason for that that although they want to ban the de demerit goods, but there are certain goods which they cannot ban. So they charge a very high price and they put some, you know, um, legal age restrictions and the public banning of uh, using such drugs and all those things. And even in, uh, you know, many of the countries, um, uh, even those where they, there's, you know, they're not, um, uh, you know, uh, D driven by the religion mostly uh, so in the in those countries as well let's suppose um, you go and you want to buy alcohol so you cannot have it if you do not have your id uh, yes, which shows that you are plus 18 right yes, so if you are not 18 plus you cannot have it so yes, they have still put some uh, regulations regarding it because yes, it's not uh, the reason behind is not uh, you know the probably the religious factor but the there are other factors as well the addiction of it the overusing of it and the damages that it can occur because yes. of uh, because of the use of uh, that product so that's why the reason is that they do not uh, can cannot completely ban such products Yes, then sir. comes to the disadvantages.
So I think one thing I can think of in the planned economy is that um, they will only be providing public goods. So they might not provide like um, all of the other consumer goods because you know they want to provide just necessities. So they might not provide the consumer goods. And because of that, there might not be um, much competition. And the, actually no, that point is wrong. But it's just that they won't be providing those goods that market economy will provide to the consumers. Okay. They'll be providing only necessities, but the other goods, um, like the wants that uh, customers want, they probably won't be able, they won't be providing that. So customers won't get that from this economy. Okay, if you, you know, there's one thing, when, uh, when, when you were giving this point, now you, um, you wanted to give an outcome for that, then you move to the other thing that is the competition thing that can be related as well. But, you know, when um, in economics, there is the AO2 objective, that is the analysis, right? Yes. We'll be discussing all of these in complete detail. Yes. So in analysis, what is required from a candidate is that they develop a chain of analysis. I call it a chain of analysis, but usually yes. In the papers, it is um, written as uh, the development of points, developing points. Like developing the point means that you developed till the end. That yeah. what will be the outcome? The way you said that, okay, fine. So they, they are only going to provide the necessities, but not the other goods. So what's the outcome of that? The, out the outcome okay. is what? Can you, can you can tell me that? The outcome can be that maybe that these customers are getting this in the country because it's the economy is planned, so they might move out, which can decrease uh, labor um, in that country. So they mm -hmm. might not be able to, there might be lesser people to produce those public goods. And okay. Reduce it can reduce employment as well. Okay, now there's one problem when you are discussing the outcome. Now, sometimes what happens is that when you are building up the points, you um, what students do is that they stretch it a lot. So yes, your sir. point is a bit, you know, is more stretched to uh, the wider perspective of what is going on and what will happen then and what will happen then. So just keep it very simple that when only the necessities are being provided and not the other goods, Yes, sir. So will there will be, you know, less variety. Oh, yes, sir. And, and you know, less variety means lower living standard. Yes, sir. Agree to this? Yes, sir. So that's it. You're going to stop it there. That will, there will be lesser variety, which is why there will be lower living standard in the country. Yes, sir. Then secondly, low quality of products. Yes, sir. Why the quality is low? Because, sir, if you look at it from another perspective, it's like market economy wants to provide good quality because their main aim is profit. So they want high quality products which can attract more customers and then more profit. But for planned economy, for them, the only job is that everyone should get that good in an equal amount. One should be um, excluded from it. So they might not focus more on quality. They will focus more on quantity and the actual good, what needs to be provided. Mm. Uh, you know, you have given more of a very purposeful reason for providing the low quality. Sometimes, you know, there is lack of purpose. Oh, yes, sir. It it's, it's the lack of, you know, the lack of purpose is that why? Because why there is a lack of purpose? It's not like that there are countries you will see that there will be countries where the public is providing a good and that is as quality good as you can find in a private sector. Yes, sir. So what about those economies? Why are they being, uh, they uh, are able to focus? The reason being, one is the resources the government has. Yes. Resources. If you have lack of resources, you talk about developing countries, you have lack of resources, you might not be able to provide good quality. Yes, sir. Lack of resources also includes the finances yes, that the developed country has much more compared to 
the developing countries. Second thing is that it's not only about the resources that they are not doing it. It is also about the factor like good governance. In countries where there are there is good governance, so the good governance has a purpose that they need to provide the uh, provide social welfare. They need to do the social welfare for their people in a very systematic manner, right? Yeah. So in developing countries, you will find that the problem of good governance. Mm -hmm. So this could be another thing. The third thing is that, and this is also relating to the private, uh, to the developing economy where, you know, if the government is providing a product, so they know that they do not have any competitors. Yes, sir. Although they, it's just not one thing that there is no profit um, maximization that they are thinking of. They do not have the competition. Yes, sir. When they will not have the competition, it's not like that the, you know, the um, state-owned enterprises do not want to earn profit. Yes, they sir. also sometimes want to earn the profit. It's not like that they do not want that. They have to pay the, you know, huge amount of money they spend. It's not like that they're spending and every other time they have the money to spend on giving the wages to thousands of workers. They need money. Yes, every month they need it. So they need to make some profits for that as well. So the, uh, the thing is the competition. Lack of competition is what makes them inefficient. Yes. They know that there is lack of competition. Whereas when you talk about a private sector and you are doing a um, uh, business as a, as a private uh, sector owner, right? So a, in a private sector, you are in honor of a um, certain business. So you would be aiming to provide the best quality to the people. You will yes. be aiming to uh, efficiently produce a product because you want to make your name there. All, it's not like you want to earn the profit. It's also because you see the startup businesses, do they aim directly for the uh, profit maximization? No. no First, no. they aim for the survival in the, in the market. So for that survival, to have customers, they do that efficiency stuff. So low quality because of inefficiency of the firm. So there are a lot of points that you can discuss here. Yes, sir. So you see one word, but there is, you know, mm, a whole lot of explanation behind it. Yes, sir. Then a very important point. Not responsive to changes in consumer demand. Oh, yes, sir. That is, again, more sort of an inefficiency that they do not respond quickly to the changes in the consumer demand because they feel that their purpose is to provide the basic needs. But you know, this is the problem now. The, this is the problem of the country's mentality probably, that yes. they, in the developing countries specifically, they think that um, our purpose is to provide the basic necessity. So it's um, almost for free. So what else you need? No, yes. you have to respond to the consumer change in demand. Why? Because when you say that your aim is social welfare, so how are you achieving that social welfare exactly. by not uh, putting an ear to what uh, the consumers are telling you? Yes, sir. Right. So that is also a very important point. Okay, sir. Got these points? So I just have a doubt about um, the, mm -hmm. the where did it go? Yeah. The, sorry, it's last point only. Can you give an example for it? Because I'm kind of confused. Like not responsive to changes in consumer demand? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Let's say they are they, when we talk about that they do not respond to the changes in consumer demand, it's not that the uh, consumers will be like, uh, if their purpose is to provide a low rate for the roti that they are providing a very yes. simple stuff that is the basic necessity there's the basic food 
so yes. the governments they do come up with this um, thing that okay fine that we have to provide um, this particular item at a lower price to people so although uh, this can be done when the private sector is basically uh, doing it and the government intervenes and they lower the rates but i'm not talking about that if the government itself is producing a product because we are studying the planned economy now so the if the government is producing the product by themselves so they they need to consider that if a consumer complain about if the consumer complain about the uh, what you call it um, that there is you know the service is not good they need some changes in the service that they are providing to people let's suppose you talk about um, railway like if i talk about i give you an example from pakistan the railway service so there was yes. one uh, you know um, uh, in previous times it's um, probably 5 to 10 years back uh, i guess 5 years back there was a private uh, sector firm that was providing uh, one of the railway service and that yes. railway service was uh, from lahore to karachi and from karachi back to lahore right yes. and it was um, i guess it was named as park business express so the the features that they were adding into their service was that they had a separate from the uh, the the general station they have a separate they used to have a separate sort of an uh, setup where there is a waiting lounge and you go to the counters you book the ticket it was just like you have come to an airport Okay, okay, a fancy airport so yes. what they what they were doing was that from there you have you have a good waiting lounge with the ac's on and then you when your train is arriving it usually arrives at time and you enter the train so they are giving you the lunch in a, and the ac service in the uh, uh, in the train is also very good wifi yes. service is also provided so all these services were there yes sir it was then i don't know for what reason they left maybe because of the financial issues so the government had to buy it back and then start so when the government started it they they just uh, put a lock on that office where there was a waiting lounge and everything so it was with the general other people who were waiting for the train so you have to stand there and wait and the services they they were providing were also not good so in such a situation if the customer says that i need uh, at least you should uh, consider the fact that uh, we need to if we are moving from one place to another sometimes it's an emergency so your train is where it comes late and they, they they arrive late at the place where our destination is so that you know is uh, if somebody claims yes sir do you think the government is going to put an ear to what he is saying definitely not yeah it's so they are not they, 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 yes exactly so they are not very much responsive yes, why sir. they do not respond too much because they know that what will they do they yes, do sir. not have any other service available yes sir. against it but for a private sector it is important because okay fine oh my god the consumers are saying that the service is not good and this is these are the changes that do we want so they yes. are going to respond very quickly if they will not very quickly asap the customer is going to move to another alternative in the competition yes sir because that's a competitive market no yes, so sir. i guess this uh, explains well that well, the responsiveness of the changes in the consumer demand right yes sir okay so make the economy so what is that very easy huh Yeah, so mixed economy is one in which the both private sector and public sector is there. Both okay. Uh, sectors are there, so private goods are being provided, public goods are being provided. Um, so merit goods and demerit goods are both being provided. From one mm-hmm. side, merit goods are provided at uh, they're underproduced, undervalued, so they'll be at uh, higher prices. And on one side, they're being provided at lower price. Um, mm-hmm. And then. 
there's one side which provides excludable and variable goods, and then there's one side which provides only non excludable and non variable goods. Okay, great. So it's a combination of market and planned economy. Yes, so the, all the advantages of these two separately can be added into this and the, all the disadvantages as well. Yes. Sir. Now, uh, you know, this uh, is a very important topic why although it seems like this is just one page and what questions can come in the past paper regarding this. So there's, you know, a lot of questions are related to the mixed planned and the you know the uh, the the free market economy can come in and how do they ask that they would probably ask that the, ask about the transition yes sir that yes. for a country is it important to um, have this transition from a planned economy to a mixed economy and will it always benefit the yes. economy or is it not going to so a lot of question can come, questions can come from this uh, particular topic and those questions are of uh, usually, usually they are of 12 marks even, yes, right? Sir. So you need to have a complete depth of the differences in the free market economy, the planned mm -hmm. economy and the mixed economy. So uh, for the extra knowledge, what you can do is that you can also read the book. But there is, a, a, if you ever get time, there is one book which is uh, known as to be by Nations Fail. It was, I guess, was written, I, if I'm not wrong, it was written by S. E. Moglu. Oh, okay. He, in that, uh, do you know about that book? I think, yeah, so I think I've heard about it. Yeah, so this is uh, this was the, the book where, when I was when I was doing my BS honors, it was introduced to me uh, in the development economics course by one of my teachers. So she discussed the you know about this book and she mm, taught some of the chapters from the book as well. So whatever the chapters which were coming in um, uh, or whatever the topics that we had to finish in the development economics, so in those chapters which were related to the book uh, chapter so um, she used to basically read out from that book as well so uh, there was you know there was one chapter i do not know the exact name for that but um, there's one chapter in that book why nations fail it is about the difference between the planned and the market economy okay sir so there they have, you know, explained it so beautifully, the difference between a planned and the free market economy. And they say they they, they, they start off this uh, chapter by saying that they were, uh, you know, when the war occurred, so Korea was divided into north and south, yes, right? Sir. So there were two brothers. One was uh, in north and the other one was in south. So they met on the border. So they were basically they were basically separated after that war. One went into the north and the other one went to the um, south. North went to Russia and south yes. went to US, right? Okay, okay. So when they met, so one brother was saying to the other, uh, so he was he was from North. So he was saying that, OK, if the South one asked that, how's life? So the brother in North, he said that um, you can see for, um, from your own eyes that I um, my situation is really bad. I do not have proper clothing. I cannot do any sort of, uh, you know, business and everything is under control of the government and um, it's all planned and I cannot, you know, have my own uh, uh, thought process that how yeah. I can, uh, you know, build up on my career because yeah. the government is not providing me the opportunities. So whereas then he asked the, um, his uh, brother in South that, how about you? 
so you look really well you mm, are buying some, you are wearing some good clothes and i guess your life is much better so the south one then tells that this is the situation in my country which is very opposite to yours that i have all the opportunities which the government is providing me to flourish yes. and then at the end what they what they do is that the brother in the north south he just um, and take off his jacket and yes. he asks his brother that okay fine you can have it so the brother in the north he says that no no i cannot have it because even this is going to be taken by the government ooh, ooh. so you know it was probably i guess it's more i do not know whether it's a true story or not but it was a very good depiction Yes, of the differences in the systems that where the free market economy is i i do not say that you they, you will not you will not see even a single country which is completely free market yes, because sir. in that way you cannot run a country yes, if you sir. are basically leaving everything to people so who is going to control it is it's just like that your parents are going out and uh, you they are saying that okay fine keep the house clean so what will happen to the house after that so it's it will clean. never be clean yeah it will be all messed up so that is you know is the case with the government they are the parents their involvement in the economy is very important is yes, extremely important but that doesn't mean that they choke the economy by not letting the people grow You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Choking should not be their policy. Yes. That they choke the whole uh, system and they keep everything mm. in their control and do not allow people to expand, to have the dreams, and to you know live those dreams by fulfilling mm. their career choices and all those things. So yes. uh, you know this is this is uh, if I talk about the U.S., it's not a free market economy. but it is a very close what you can call it very close system to the free market economy yes sir. why because they allow that you know when they say that um, even in the movies that uh, america is a democratic country so yes, you sir. can uh, have your freedom here so yes. when they when they talk about it uh, i did i know there are a lot of views about it they might um, be that okay fine it seems to be democratic but it is not so much democratic but then again yeah. it is the closest that you can see to a free market economy at least for the own people the living standard and everything if you compare it with um, a country like uh, north korea if you talk oh. about so that country where you cannot have the access to i guess so i have heard about it that the facebook and all those you cannot yes, post about the state and there are a lot of restrictions so all those things are there so there are the planned economic system i do not i i am not saying that planned economic system is bad yes sir those countries who can run it well government being uh, uh, providing everything to people good enough right yes, it's not that it's just that the difference between the two di- uh, to the two systems and how different they are and when we when we talk about these things uh i guess you know completely going to the free market economy is not always uh, good yes, completely sir. going to the planned is also sometimes uh, you know we can um, uh, be uh, detrimental um, especially for the people who are living there they might want to go out and want to move to uh, another place Yes, so yes. when we talk about when we talk about the free market system uh, and you have you must have seen that that the um, that the US government has experienced it that uh, they were uh, in a free market setup but yes. ha- being in a free market setup does not mean that the government intervention is not important as yes. you can see in 2008 the global economic crisis occurred oh yes sir and that was because the um, private firms were doing the business like crazy the oh, insurance yes, companies the stock market the banking system you see the banking system was it went all the way 
to yes, provide sir. the loans to people and this was also written in one of the book uh, written by Skidelsky in his book he um, his book name was i guess um, um masters of i i do not remember masters of canes um, some sort of that i will just um, search out the name and i'll let you know okay sir so uh, they in that book he completely uh, you know he uh, he pictureized the 2008 global economic crisis oh, okay okay sir. and he 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 explained it that the uh, when when the loans were being given so yes. they were giving the loans to ninjas why they were called as ninjas the people that those who do uh, who do not have the assets they were not Ooh. having any jobs but the loans were given and Ooh. nothing was kept in the reserves and when yes. it was the, the news came that the market is uh, dropping and everything and people were getting unemployed everybody came in to get their money out from the banks Oh. and it's a there's a huge documentary on the you know youtube of this that the bank managers previous nights were calling to their uh, family members that take out the money because the mm. banks are going to collapse the economy mm -hmm. is collapsing the banks are going to get bankrupt they were calling the uh, federal reserve for the money federal reserve for the for the start they were like okay fine that's a normal situation but when they came to know that there are long queues and banks they had shut us down and they were just waiting for her what what is going to happen next because everybody was there to collect the money and you know oh, what the I... banking how the banking system works is that they whatever let's suppose you come to me and you save 100 dollars i'm not going to save it i'm going to utilize it to g give somebody else a loan Oh, yes, and sir. keep some part of it as reserve which yes, the sir. state mostly tells the central bank the federal reserve tells that you need to have a healthy reserve so yeah, that yeah. if in case that person comes so you have you must have something to give exactly. and they had nothing to give because the people who were loaned uh, so they also got uh, got bankrupted so they yes, were sir. they did not have anything to pay back and then when the when the banks did not have any money how would they give, uh, give back to the savers so they they were not able to do that as well yes, there sir. you know he explained it so beautifully that why a mixed economy is better always better than a you know a very uh, uh, what you call it um, very uh, harsh line of free market economy that you apply or a harsh stance on the planned economy that you apply that why mix is better is because government gave first of all put some trillions of dollars into the um, um, into the economy to revive the situation but then they realized that the situation is even worsening people are still taking out money from the banks and those yes, who are not able to they are standing in queues so then yeah. the government guaranteed $250,000 per account to, to keep your money in the account. And if the bank is going to get bankrupted, we are going to pay you this much amount. So you just believe yeah. that how smart this policy was that if you have $100 in your bank account, yes, what would sir. you pray for? That you get that $100 or the bank get bankrupted? The bank get bankrupted. <laughs> Yeah, the bank get bankrupt. That's what you will be you will be aiming at. You will be praying for so that you get the two fifty thousand dollars. So that's how the people stop withdrawing the money. Oh, right. So the banks okay. were saved from getting bankrupt. Okay. So they were not bankrupt. So that's how it was saved. So this was the government intervention. Yes, sir. So government intervened and saved the economy, and it was not only that. U.S. The, there was a whole lot of scrutiny went on for the companies like Lehman Brothers were bankrupt, then uh, the AIG uh, insurance company bankrupt. So there were a lot of uh, things happening. So the gov the state uh, called everybody and asked that why you were doing such financial activities exceedingly without uh, you know considering that there is a risk factor. So yeah. there was a huge scrutiny 
went on after that and the the companies were basically you know some companies were sanctioned as well so you know uh, this was the Im- this was the impact of the government which yes, in 1930s great depression at that time the keynes basically told about one of the greatest economies of the economists of all times he told at that time that this is very important that the government intervenes yeah exactly government exactly. intervention is important and in 2008 we have seen that if the government had not and it was written in skidelsky's book that if the government had not intervened the economy of us would have no, collapsed crazy, yeah. and with that the economy of the whole world would have collapsed why because yeah. you know uh, Uh, the real economy of the other countries would have collapsed why because most of the products which the us the citizens are basically buying they are buying from the other countries and if there is massive unemployment and it was a massive unemployment at that time there were millions of people who were unemployed there in us so yes. at that time when everybody was unemployed who would demand the goods nobody yeah no one when there will be low demand so those countries who were providing them the goods the factories were closed exactly yes sir so you know this is what the whole scenario is that i have explained to you that yes, free market economy is good it has a lot of features but one of the worst impacts of a free market economy is the market failure yes sir. the whole market can crash and the only thing that can resolve this issue is the government but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that government keep everything in their own control that might not also work if you have enough resources to provide good living standard to your people you can do that if you can't then allow people to build their lives exactly yes sir right you yes, think sir. more about the poor you redistribute the income from the rich to the poor but you do not care about every other thing that if somebody is doing the business stop uh, him from doing the business that he should not grow and those sort of things are also not good for the economy because they have yes. to grow yes. their gdp and everything yes sir so i guess uh, a lot of discussion on this yes sir so you understand the main idea about the free market plan and the mixed economy Yes sir. So whenever the question will come you are going to support the idea of a mixed economy. But yes, in mixed economy what you can say is that government allowing people to do businesses and supporting the free market sort of a system but yes. with some controls with some regulation. So this is the evaluation that you can provide for it. right that the free market cannot work alone the plan might not be efficient enough so it must be a mixed system where the role of the private sector is huge but under the control of the government because government is the one which is going to you know uh, tame the people and tame yes, the behavior of uh, the producers and even the customers and everyone in the economy yes sir I guess this is a lot of information flowing towards you. It's good though sir it's good for this chapter. Exactly. So now uh, if uh, 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 what will happen is that once we are done with all these uh, chapters for the section 1 the questions will come so you need to have more of this knowledge uh, so that you can basically provide a good evaluation and do the good analysis of this. So we oh, are basically we are basically done with chapter number 4 yes, so uh, two more chapters left 1.5 uh, which is i guess uh, is the classification uh, one is uh, 2.5 is i guess for the uh, the consumer surplus i guess the other one yes, is the classification of the yes. uh, goods right so yes, these are the two topics which are left and then our uh, questions are going to start and uh, you know you have to remind me as well about the paper pattern so one of, in one of the classes we also have to do the paper pattern that is very important all right sir. that uh, you know is uh, needed to be done and uh, what else uh, uh, have you done the uh, previous uh, worksheets the mcqs yes, i have you checked them yes sir 
Okay, so what we will be doing is that in next class, if you will have any questions related to it, first we will entertain all your questions. And okay. I'm going to mark 1.2 and 1.3. And uh, I will also share with you, once you are done with 1.4 uh, MCQs, you can yes. let me know. I'll share the answer key and you can just um, tell you that uh, how, ma how many marks you scored. And then okay. we are also going to discuss that as well in the next class. Okay, sir. Right. So this yes. is it about today. And uh, you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll just send the class. Okay, so I just I was a little bit confused about our one point that you said that um, the disadvantages for planned economy will be the, the international trade. Be a lack yeah, of the lack of international trade. trade. You know, there's not much of the uh, 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 competition going on now because yes, the government is producing everything. So yes, government sir. might not be able to produce, you know, most of the goods that uh, and again, the second point is the, 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 the main thing is that one is that they cannot uh, they are they do not have enough of the resources to produce uh, so many goods which they can provide to their people as well. And then they also export. And oh, secondly, right. there is another, you know, there is another point to it. There is another point to it. And that is that the quality factor that we were talking about international trade is not that easy. There are, uh, you know, international uh, standards that uh, you have to meet of the quality. And if the in a developing country, the products which are being produced by the government are not of good quality, how you are going to be able to sell it in the in the market? And then uh, one more thing is that it's not only about the quality, it's also about how efficiently you have produced those products. So your average cost needs to be very low. So you charge a lower price because... In local economy, you might be, com although they, in the plant they do not have any uh, competition, but when they are when they are sending the product in another country, so that country has a lot of options from buying from yeah. other than your country, right? So yes, if sir. China or Japan is providing a product at a lower price to yes, US, so why would uh, they want to buy from you? Exactly. Why would they buy from you? So that is, you know, is again a very important and uh, 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 a very tricky thing for a developing country, especially that government needs to provide the product of high quality with lower cost. So lower cost comes when you produce efficiently. So mm -hmm. are they efficient enough? That is the problem. And in developing countries, how come the private sector is able to do it? Because they have the competition. They have that urge of expansion. So because of that, when they have the competition, they want to compete locally and internationally. So they are able to provide the products at a more efficient uh, level. That's why many of the governments usually provide the support to the private sector, which who wants to sell the product in the other countries. What they do is that they provide them the subsidies they provide training to their workers. They provide research and development setup so that your cost will be low and your quality will be high and you sell it to the other countries and your exports can grow in that way. Yes, sir. Understood the point? Yes, sir. Great, great. So this is it about it. Any other questions you have? Any other questions? Um... Just a small one. You mentioned bad governance. What does that mean? Good governance. Yeah, you mentioned that there will be low quality because of bad governance. So, bad when you when you are talking about a good governance or the bad governance. So good governance is a is a is a concept where you know the government is uh, catering to the fact that they want to provide uh the social welfare and yes. when they are providing that social welfare to people so they are providing of good quality so in okay. that a lot of things when you are talking about a good governance so there are a lot of things that comes into effect that how responsive that government is to the changes in the consumer demand 
um yes, what uh, the, the the transportation setup the infrastructure that they have developed the merit goods that they are providing the quality of the merit goods that they are providing is it more equitable is, is the economy more you know accountable um, and uh, they cater the fact that, that there must be a proper redistribution of the income so good governance could also be you know when i talk about bad governance bad governance could also be that you bought the money from the IMF to spend on your people and yes, uh, you were not able to do it effectively. It's not only mm -hmm. that you have done the corruption, it's also because of the lack of resources, you were not able to utilize that money effectively yes. to support your people. All mm -hmm. of that can come into the, you know, the good governance factors. All right, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So there must be a political and economical stability that the government must be looking for if you are talking about a good governance. Okay, sir. Okay, any other questions? Um, no, sir. That's it? Yes, sir. Great. So this is it for today then, Ava. Thank you so much for your time. Take very good Thank care you so of much, yourself. Allah Thank you, sir. Allah